Hey guys, D-Mike here for another episode of Super Mario Galaxy. We're having a good time, we're having some fun. Mario's taking a little bit of a snooze. He's got to rest up before he can go on an adventure. So let's go ahead and get started. Collect some more stars. I'd like to try to make as much progress in these videos as I can. I know that the collection of stars can sometimes take a little longer than I intend for it to, especially because when you're trying to commentate and play, it causes you to dilly-dally a little bit, so... You know. Stuff happens, I suppose. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this series so far. I know that it's new, but I'm enjoying uh, playing it. As much as I enjoyed playing through Link's Awakening, when you wind up playing one game kind of consistently for a while, it does kind of wear a little thin on you. I mean, I still love it, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to throw any shade on one of my favorite games of all time, but... You know, you just need a little breath of fresh air, and that's kind of what this has been. Now, I say that now, and, and then in maybe a month, I will feel completely differently when the inevitable sits in of this game kind of beat me down. Because there's some there's some points in this game that are just really frustrating. Enjoyable, but frustrating. So we'll see. But hey, you know what? I'm doing it for you guys, for the fans. I'll muscle through it. We're no quitter, right? So anyway, just wanted to do a quick thank you to everybody who's been watching this so far. Hopefully you're enjoying it. Feel free to comment and give your thoughts on various things that I talk about throughout the video. And if you have any questions for me, you can always feel free to toss those down in the comment section. Or if you want to send a message on the old Instagrams or the Twitters, we love that too. I wish I had something to be able to attack this guy with. So, always a big fan of interacting with fans. I will usually reply to almost everything because I'm just that kind of guy, you know what I'm saying? Thank you again to everybody who has subscribed and liked and commented on the videos. You can expect more of the same chill shenanigans as I have hopefully been providing so far. So we get our very first throwback power-up. This is the Superstar to run around in this sphere, which is kind of disorienting now that I'm looking at it. It is making my brain hurt a little bit. But, yep, that was it. That was uh, pretty tough. I'm not sure how we would have managed that without that power star and the extra, like, I don't know, 30 seconds of that. There's no reward. That's just... That's just it. I think that that was actually intended to come here and kill these rolling chain chomps, but whatever. There might be some sort of additional bonus to that later on down the road. I can imagine that being kind of a an alternative star type of thing. That's usually how the game goes. There actually is a star later on down the road that you do need to have the Rainbow Mario power up to to complete, so it, it is a thing, it's just I'm not sure if it was that thing. We'll come back to it and find out. There's always time to to experiment, to fool around, have a good time, hopefully a great time. I'm always trying to have a great time. So I don't think I can crack this with my, nope, never mind, just kidding. That's part of the problem about jumping into this game after having not played it for a while, is that there's mechanics and things that happen that I don't remember exactly if I'm doing it right, but I guess I was. So it looks like our toad friends here are being encased in crystals. Who could have possibly done such a nefarious thing to these guys? Oh, I don't think I talked to you. Sorry. Ooh, good idea, toad. Okay. So these guys, these giant Octorok looking fellas, can not be attacked with star bits. That's not going to do you any good. Although I do I'm do a little, little look-see up here. Okay, so is there, a, is there a life back here? Something fun? Okay, great. <laughs> That's also one of the downside to some of these early 3D games is that the camera is not great. So you just got to make do with what you have. I guess that's part of the challenge of playing through an earlier game is that the kinks had not quite been worked out all the way. Don't get me wrong, it's great. Still a ton of fun to play. But 
If you're looking for flawless gameplay, you're not gonna get it. Yeah, there was nothing over there. Wishful thinking, you know, we're just trying to have fun. See what this loom has to say. Ooh, a big, big danger. But what if I am the danger? All right, so let's demonstrate. Go ahead and boop. That will be a useful mechanic down the road when we run into some boss fights. Oh, there's goo up here. Oh, someone's feeling spicy. So this is King Caliente. He is encased in SpaghettiOs. A, ooh, and my controller is sending me in all kinds of spinning directions. That's one thing that this, I don't know if that's my controller causing that problem, but that is that is an issue that I do have and will probably continue to have in, you know, minor quantities throughout the course of this game is that my controller sometimes just kind of goes AWOL. I know that there's like Joy-Con drift, but this is not, it's not drifting. It's just spinning me in circles, so. So he's gonna spit, I don't know, I don't, I'm not really sure what that is, some goo at you. These little, these little bits, he's gonna spit his bits at you. You don't wanna, you don't want an octopus spin his bits at you. You gotta watch out for that. So this fight, not really too bad. You gotta send the green ones back at him because green means go. And three pods of red means you're dead. So that's a, uh, that's a good rhyme to remember. They teach you that in grade school. I remember learning that when I was in third grade, that if an octopus is gonna spit its three fiery balls at you, 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 you run away. Because that's a thing that everybody knows. All right, so not too bad. That was a pretty, pretty decently easy boss fight. We're gonna flip into the star. We did it, everybody. Pretty good. Feeling good about that. All right. We're getting close to having enough stars for a boss fight. So we do need eight to unlock the first boss fight. We'll rack up some more star bits. Unlock a new galaxy in the terrace. So just something to keep in mind is that you can do these in whatever order you want. I'm just gonna pop this one open right now and see what we get. The loop-de-loop -loop galaxy. Okay, so this is one of my least favorites. And there is actually, I feel like this is kind of like a fan unfavorite. I don't know if that's a word, but Surfing 101 is, it. it's pretty polarizing amongst the Super Mario stands of the world, specifically the galaxy crowd. RIP Steve Irwin. So this one is, uh, it's something. You'll see what I mean. It's hopefully manageable. We'll talk to this giant penguin. We have Corsair Surfer. We're going to go ray surfing. So we're going to be explained here. Uh, we are not using the... Okay, well, I didn't actually... Okay, I didn't actually do that. So if you're using the Joy-Con or the Switch with Joy-Cons docked, then it's going to have you do the proper motions. You have to kind of hold things... A little up and towards yourself. So, yeah, this is, I mean, this is kind of their attempt to keep the motion controls part of this game alive. I don't particularly care for this just because it's not super accurate and this is just one of those missions that at its core is not super fun. I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I don't dislike motion controls in games, but this is still a relic of the Wii era, which I feel is something that I, you know, and playing games subsequently after that, I don't, I don't find myself playing games and be like, man, I wish they had motion controls. That would make this a lot better. That's never really been a thing for me. So I'm not a hater of motion controls, but I'm also not a connoisseur. I'm not going to be looking for it. It doesn't really move the needle for me either way. But this is just a simple little race. You're trying to, to beat the time there. You got, oh, well, just kidding. I was hoping it would only take me one try. Hopefully it will. If it doesn't, then I'm gonna cut to my successful run. That was my first death, I think. Leave it to Surfing 101 to be the first time that I, that I beef it. Good job, me. Thanks, penguins. 
Yeah, so this in and of itself is not super tough. I say that and I'm probably going to wind up eating it like 10, 15 times. They do give you an early life though, which is nice. So if you're afraid that you're going to, you know, have a perpetual loss cycle going on here, you can slow down and grab that. That's kind of my recommendation here. If you're having trouble, just slow it down, you know, take a deep breath. Don't, you know, don't be hitting the, the speed up too much when you're rounding corners and maybe take the outside of the corner when you're kind of weaving yourself back in. That kind of helps. I'm trying to, you know, demonstrate that as I'm talking. So that way it's not like monkey see, or sorry, do what I say, not as I do kind of thing. Trying to be authentic here for you guys. So the final, uh, final approach here is this big upwards helix. As I'm trying to do this very carefully because I don't want to repeat this. I think we'll make it. Looks like we've got enough time, yeah. Looks pretty good. Now, that wasn't a great time. I understand that. I'm not trying to speed run this. I'm just trying to be successful here. Our gold medal is, shockingly, a star. There is an upgraded version of that, a difficulty hike for one of these special stars later on in the game that I just, I don't love it. So if you could feel my enthusiasm through this star, you'll never guess how I feel about that one. It is, it is something. It will take some tries. I'm going to try to probably maybe do a little bit of practicing beforehand. So that way it's not an absolute disaster. No. We're not going to save the game game. So that's the only one that we can do for now. There are two stars available to us now in order to unlock the boss fight. So we'll do the honey hive ones. I like the Honey Hive Galaxy. It's fun using B Mario. The only issue that I have with the Honey Hive Galaxy is this that the missions are long. So, you know, we're at about maybe a third of the video now. I'm going to try to squeeze these two in. And then the next video will actually start with probably the boss fight, which will be fun. So, yeah, it's fun. I mean, it's enjoyable. It's just uh, there's just a lot trying to get to where you need to go which can be a little a little frustrating. Not as not as fun to try to have to jump through all these hoops and stuff to get to where you're going. But uh, hey, that's part of the exploring and adventuring, right? That's what it's all about. I'm trying to remember where I'm supposed to go here. Like, it's been a long time. This this actually this stack of rocks is pretty fun to break through. It's very satisfying. Get yourself a bunch of star bits in the process. That's pretty neat. These weird little goobers over here. I also think it's funny that whenever you do your little, uh, when you do your Luma jump, whatever you want to call that, I don't know. The Luma does pop up, which I think is pretty cute. You know, he pops out of your hat a little bit. Reminds me of like Cappy from Odyssey. So we're just gonna have fun. I believe there's actually a, a life over there too, if you need it. If you're feeling a little risky and you want to bolster your health, get yourself a life. Just get a life, viewers, okay? Just, God, get a life. Or however many I have, like 16 or 17, that's good. That'll help. There's another one. 50 star bits will net you a, a life, so that's pretty good. So our goal is to get up to that wiggler that we saw. Oh, there's more star bits over here in the shape of an M. Oh, that's adorable. We love that. Oh, okay. Was not expecting that. That actually uh, kind of made my brain hurt a little bit. I don't know if you guys saw that, but the way the orientation of the screen was kind of made my my brain squigglies go a little haywire. All right, that's just a little. I just want to. Okay, we'll backflip into that. I don't think I can do anything with this yet. Yeah, I feel like the game is very like no, you will not. You will not circumvent what we are planning for you, boy, my boy. So the game is telling us that certain things, AKA rocks, if I could do this correctly, I'm shaking my controller, which is very fun. Love that, I probably sound like I'm shivering. So this is just a mechanic or a, a gimmick to show you about rocks being in the way. That only becomes an issue later on when you're trying to do 
the kind of bonus stuff later on in the game. For now, that's not really a thing. But hey, you can break through rocks and unlock new things. We're going to push this big red button because who wouldn't? My goodness, we're going to leave Wiggler alone. We're not going to try to murder wildlife. We're not Link. So stomping on that button. I'm assuming this can also be considered a button. Pops that down. That's pretty cool. We like that. And some wall jumps back and forth. Pops us up to the secondary part of the treetops. You weren't going to come here on the in the first mission, so this is, good. I guess, the game's chance of letting you explore. You will be coming back here multiple times in future iterations of similar missions, but... Oh. Okay, well, I thought that was a bunch of star bits there, and I was... I was wiggling my... I was wiggling my bits at its bits, and it didn't do it for me. So, whatever game. I don't need you. Tell me what to do. Although I would have liked to have those star bits. I'm a sucker for star bits. All right, so this is another chance to use the rainbow star and get a bunch of star bits as well. Whenever you kill these bad boys, you do wind up with a very star bitty reward. I do kind of feel bad that we're aggressively murdering wildlife, but hey. You gotta do what you gotta do. And I don't mean that at all. Okay. So. Ooh. Okay, I thought that was actually a path that would take me somewhere else, but it is not. So we will not fall off the edge into oblivion. That's fun. Now, I believe that this is actually supposed to be a bit of a Ferris wheel type of deal going on. I would like to jump down there. I <laughs> okay, thank you, game. Oh, that's just a uh, trampoline. Just kidding. There is a way to activate it, and I'm going to... Oh, okay. Uh, rude. Rude. Let's actually demonstrate this now. I don't... As much... <laughs> actually, well, it's actually good that I'm about to go get it. Hopefully I don't die by natural means here. Ah! How's that feel, guy? So getting that is a super mushroom pickup. And doing so will net you three additional health if you are low on health, it'll bring you all the way back up to tip-top shape. So, that's fun. We love that. Let's get rid of this guy here. Nope, just kidding. We'll just, we'll just go, we'll sneak right past you. We'll give you the old Midwest. Just gonna sneak right past you. So that activates the Ferris wheel. We'll hop on up. I always remember liking Ferris wheels as a kid, but there was one at an amusement park that I went to, which I think the intent of it was to be kind of like a wild and crazy thrill ride version of a Ferris wheel, where you could really rock the cart. And uh, yeah, that was a little scary. I remember that being kind of a thing that I didn't particularly love, being a small child and having this large Ferris wheel be something that was flailing all around. That's a good question. What do you guys feel about uh? About, about amusement parks, theme parks, you know. I, I've always been a big fan of them. I, I remember going to, to Disney World as a little kid. That was fun, Disneyland, wherever you're from, whatever part of the, the US or around the world, the, the other Disney parks. So killing that guy, uh, that was a bit of an anticlimax. Sorry about that. But yeah, what do you guys feel about amusement parks? Do you have a favorite ride? You like roller coasters? Maybe a nice Ferris wheel, perhaps a a merry-go-round, a water slide. You know, what kinds of things are we into? Okay, so we've got all kinds of things popping up, all kinds of pop-up notifications. I thought I disabled those on my phone. Some always sneak through. So here's our first interaction with a overworld Hungry Luma. He wants those delicious star bits that I've been talking about. We do have 400, so let's go ahead and do that. We'll do a fun Hungry Luma start to end stuff off. So you feed him enough, he cleans his plate, he goes full 1950s and in his absolute immense joy explodes, as you all do, and produces the sweet, sweet galaxy. So once again, pink launch stars are Hungry Luma adventures. So we're gonna take on the Rocky Road 
I actually believe this is a, a level that has... Yes, this has some throwback music to Mario 3, which is probably my favorite 2D Mario. So enjoy the tunes. This, I believe, is one of the overworld musics of Super Mario 3. I'll be quiet for a moment so you can enjoy it. I remember Mario 3 being a thing for me. I think my first exposure to it was on the Super Nintendo. Being the youngest in my family, I wound up with a lot of hand-me-downs and I became the brief owner in time to our family Super Nintendo after my siblings had aged out and weren't really into games anymore. So, ooh, that was close. And I remember playing that and enjoying it a lot we had the Super Mario All-Stars Collection, which is a great compilation of Mario games, and I really enjoyed that. Mario 3 got a graphical update and some mechanical updates on that one, and it's just, it's a really good version of it. I really enjoy it, and thankfully they put it on the Switch Super Nintendo shop, so really enjoy that. Super Mario 3 is great if you haven't played it. Do it. It's for your health. I wouldn't lead you wrong. I only speak the truth. So yes, love me some Mario 3. Super Mario World, also great. You know, don't, don't get me wrong. It's, you know, they're, they're both great in their own way. Obviously, one was a little more posh than the other because it was made for a, a later platform, but hey, what can you do? All right, let's walk around here. Collect all the delicious star bits from around the cake. This cake actually looks like mint chocolate chip and some strawberry. That's fun. What's your favorite cake, everybody? How about that? What's your favorite dessert? What are you munching on? What you got a sweet tooth for? You ice cream? Cheesecake brownies? Maybe some strudel? Whatever you're into. Actually, that was pretty quick. I wasn't expecting to do that that quickly. So... Now that we did that, I guess, uh... You guys are going to treat. You just completed that sweet treat galaxy mission. And we're going to do a treat to finish off this episode. We're going to do the boss battle today. You bet. So whenever you've got enough power stars to get you to the unlockable stage of the boss. Took eight. And we get Bowser Jr.'s robot reactor. We're going to do it live. We'll finish off the episode today. It might run a little long, just by virtue of however long this takes me. But we're doing Mega Legs Moon. See, this is the uh, this is the best strategy as a professional in your career. Under promise, over perform. Say it's going to take you two weeks, get it done in one week. Reap the benefits. Blow people away with your professionalism. That's how you do it. That's a life pro tip. So this is, I think, our first introduction to using bullet bills as a as a way to unlock stuff. Nope. Come this way. Come this way. Nope. My dude. My dude. Yes. Come here. Perfect. There's a life down there if you need it. You direct the bullet bill at the little glass dome and it'll unlock that for you, which is cool. We like it. We love it. And we got to have it. So here we go. It appears that that was just one planetoid and that's it, maybe? I don't know. So this is our first encounter. I think there might be another one, but if not, this this is a pretty cool boss fight with Mega Leg. I like this a lot. Just the ingenuity and kind of way that this looked as a kid was just really fun to me. I just love the idea that you've got this huge bipedal robot stomping around all over the planet trying to come get you. That's pretty cool. So there's little uh, there's little pods of star bits and coins. I'm not sure if there's a good way to get them. I think that the, I guess the best way would be to have Mega Leg step on them, but it's got bullet bills coming at you. So, I mean, you could steer those back up that direct or down, I guess, that direction if that's what you're looking for. But 
there's better ways to get star bits in the future if you're if you're craving. You need to help out a tasty Luma brother. Or hungry Luma. Tasty. I mean, they're tasty for it. So, our goal here is to break down that security fence. And you're thinking to myself, well, you might be thinking to yourself, how do I do this? Well, you can do this one of two ways. You can use multiple bullet bills to break down the security fence and have it come over and drop through like that. Or if you're sneaky, like I wanted to try and look pro and do, but I kind of goofed. Um, you can guide the bullet bill up over the fence and it'll attack the dome thing too, which is pretty cool. So definitely went a little quicker on getting these stars than I intended to. I was not thinking that that would be a thing. So whoops. But hey, sometimes you just come in ahead of schedule and under budget. What can you do? You're just so efficient and professional. That's the quality of good marksmanship. Bam, Grand Star. Put that in your pipe and bubble it. Woo, Wahoo was right, Mario. We did it. Heck yeah. That feels pretty good, doesn't it, everybody? Bring that back to the old observatory and show our mama what we're made of. I mean, she's not our mama, but whatever. The observatory's mama. So that's two of seven. Unlocks another dome in the process. That's pretty heckin' cool, guys. It also counts as a star. And most of the, I think almost all of the boss battles are only one and done. So that unlocks the fountain. Very nice. So in the middle of the observatory, there is a uh, bacon. Every time that we get another grand star, we get a little more bacon. So we'll be able to fly to the center of the universe where there is, for all intents and purposes, according to NASA, a giant black hole where we will be crushed under the immense pressure and the game will be over. So Rosalina actually is a giant sadist. So every time that you get a new grand star, you get a new dome. So that's pretty cool. And we're being told that there's a map and we can talk to this bad boy. We will save now. So we'll take a quick look at that real quick. Start and stop the sentence with the same word. I would love to see the map. So here you can get a picture of all the different places that you've been. This is the Hungry Luma Galaxy that we just did. What's more useful is the list. So you can go through here and see what stars you've collected, what's available, what's still to be done, your racing times. I wish that the game would tell you how many stars you had remaining, but then that would also kind of spoil it to let you know what you have left to do. So unfortunately, that's not gonna be a thing. That'd be a little cheating. So we'll come back to the terrace later. That'll be something that we'll fool around with, but we just unlocked something new and we gotta, we gotta check it out. You can't just have a brand new toy and not play with it. What is life without living? So that was a pretty fun episode. We got some stars. We did a little bit of a wave race, a boss battle. We had a good time. Hopefully you guys enjoyed yourself. Answer those questions if you get a chance. Don't forget to like the video, comment, subscribe if you like. And I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.